The first thing you should do when faced with a difficult Trudyuk exercise is scan it briefly. What's there? In the first exercise, everything is in first position, and we have only five notes, A, B, C sharp, D, and E. Your initial practicing in the Trudyuk exercises may go quite slowly. We'll want to look at an exercise like this one line at a time, and sometimes even one measure at a time, or groups of four notes at a time. So I'm going to look at line one. It looks like we have a scale pattern that goes from A to E and back. faster, and I'll want to get up to a point where I can sustain at least one measure at a time in one bow. The easiest way to increase speed and coordination in the Trudyuk exercises is to practice each line with the following two rhythm patterns, long, short, and short, long. The purpose of these rhythm exercises is to speed up the action of every other note that we play. Then when I increase the tempo of the metronome, my sense of coordination will be increased. I like to pair these rhythm exercises with metronome work. The simplest metronome work involves starting at a very slow, manageable tempo, like 60 equals the eighth note, and then slowly moving the metronome needle up by uh, increments of about 10 or sometimes 15 or 20 at a time. Starting out very slowly with the metronome is the equivalent of taking a magnifying glass to your violin playing and seeing exactly what's there in great detail. No one has ever learned the violin by playing everything fast only. Most great practicing happens at a very, very, very slow tempo. Beyond doing rhythm practicing and metronome practicing, there are two very useful techniques that we can use to become much more familiar with the patterns in the Trudyuk exercises. The first is a stop and start technique. In this technique, we'll play four notes and then rest for a quarter note. This allows us time to think about what's coming ahead next and it allows us to start grouping notes in groups of four notes at a time. Grouping notes in our mind helps with the recollection of patterns in these exercises. Another practice technique I'd like to discuss is pattern simplification. For instance, in line number 19, every other note is a fourth finger E. Let's take that fourth finger E out entirely and play the line it 
it sounds pretty simple without this fourth finger E. After reviewing that pattern without the fourth finger E, let's reinsert the fourth finger E on almost an automatic pilot. We should always try to reduce very complicated, repetitive sounding lines into very simple ideas. Line 20 is very similar. There are many repeated open A's. I'm going to take those open A's out. And then I'll put them back in. Recognizing these simple, repeated patterns will simplify the action of our left hand and it'll simplify our thinking process when we have to approach that line and try to play it. Once you've gotten a handle on Shradiak exercise number one, why don't you try creating some variations with it? You can play all of this exercise on any of the other three strings No problem. I think another really good variation of Shradiak exercise number one is to also try um, the same patterns in the left hand but with a different hand shape. For instance, instead of using our fox hand shape with second and third fingers close together, we could try a T hand shape with first and second fingers close together. Or a rabbit hand shape with third and fourth fingers close together. Or uh, a claw hand shape with none of the fingers touching. It's always a good idea to review etudes that you play very well, but experiment with different variations that can continue to extend and develop your technique.